Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about modern portfolio theory and how you apply it to cryptocurrency. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we did this discussion, we do this type of discussion about every month or two. And it's a way to sort of figure out what a portfolio should look like based on a fairly popular theory that goes back several decades. Now, the modern portfolio theory is often used in, in traditional markets because you have, you have data going back several decades and it makes a lot of sense. Applying it to cryptocurrency is not the easiest task in the world, to say the least. Why is that? Well, a lot of cryptocurrencies don't have very much data and a lot of them have not experienced a bear market. It's easy in a bull market when altcoins are going sky high to think that it makes sense to just go all in on altcoins, but then when things turn bearish, you can understand why having more Bitcoin could be better, especially if you see the Bitcoin dominance going up. So the last time we did this video was back when we were super, super bullish and things were moving up, and, and some people were pretty skeptical on, on why having so much Bitcoin. We're gonna redo the video now, but from a bearish sentiment, when the market is bearish, to try to make it make a little bit more sense of why modern portfolio theory, while it might not provide the best insight in the world, it does provide insight that is at least worth listening to and potentially applying it to your portfolio. So let's imagine that you're new to the market and you've never invested in the market and you wonder how to get in and you have a thousand dollars. Let's say you have a thousand dollars. You're like, how, how do I get into crypto? What do I buy? You know, do I start with random altcoins? Do I start with, um, you know, the, the altcoin that was shilled on Reddit last week that probably had a lot of bots upvoting the post? Um, what, you, what you could do is you could run this analysis and, and what we're doing is we're identifying the portfolio composition that maximizes your risk adjusted returns. Now your risk adjusted returns, the Sharpe ratio, okay? The Sharpe ratio, these are your risk adjusted returns. Every single dot that you see on this presentation right here on this figure, it represents a portfolio. And that portfolio is made up of different compositions. There's a lot of people that would like to say, hey, rate my portfolio. And then someone might respond based on their own bias perspective as to what they think is good and bad. We're going to do an unbiased perspective. We're only gonna look at three coins in this video. We're gonna keep it super simple, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. There's a reason for each. And, and we're going to show you why sticking to some of the safer options is good when, when even when things are bullish, even when things are bullish, because when they turn bearish, you're gonna wish you had, you're gonna wish you had more Bitcoin. So what this shows is the expected return versus the volatility. Now, the secret sauce of a lot of hedge funds might be using the projected return instead of the expected return, because they're basically saying, okay, well, this is where we think it's gonna go. So we're gonna project out that this asset's going to have a, a specific return. We're gonna, we're gonna use historical volatility to say this is the, the type of volatility we expect going forward. And based on that projection and the downside risk, we're going to come up with the portfolio weights that you should use in your portfolio. In this video, we're not using projected returns, we're just using ex uh, expected returns based off historical returns. Now, arguably, you could say, well, historical returns, the past doesn't mean anything about the future. Um, of course, people like to say that all the time, but we were putting the same same chart out back in back in, in the bear market, and it worked out pretty well so far, showing that, hey, cryptocurrencies are still likely to trend up with time, and that using using bearish times to, to weight your portfolio in a way that makes sense and minimizes your risk is not the worst thing in the world. So let's better understand what this means. What is the expected return? Well, again, it's based on the historical returns. What does 1.0 mean? Well, that means 100% annually. This has been annualized. So if you go over here and you find an expected return of 100%, that means annually you would expect a 100% return. That might sound crazy, but guys, I mean, Bitcoin has gone up 20X before the retracement over the last 14 or 15 months. So 100% return is just what you might see on average annually, but it doesn't guarantee a 100% return. And that's what people need to understand is that there's a, there's a volatility aspect of it. And let's say you were to go pick a portfolio that had an expected return of 100% and you came over here 
and then you pick this portfolio, you have to recognize that the volatility on that is 65%. So your expected return to within one standard deviation or approximately 68% is, is a 35% 35, 35 return up to 165% return. And the chance that you see that is probably 68% to, to within one standard deviation. That doesn't mean you can't see a negative, or it doesn't mean you can't see a return of one or, or something less than one. You could of course see that, it's just that's what it is to within one standard deviation. We know there are years in crypto where the returns are not good, where they go down for a while. It's just that on average, you're doing fairly well. On average, you're going to see 100% annual expected return based on historical data. This is a composition of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. We're gonna, we're gonna get into that a little bit more. So what is what do we take from this? Well. This is the efficient frontier. The part down here you might consider the inefficient frontier. So the, the goal, the goal is for a given volatility level, for a given volatility level or risk level that you're okay with, that you said, hey, I'm okay with this volatility, I'm okay with the downside risk. There exists a single portfolio out of the coins you have chosen that maximizes your risk adjusted returns or your sharp ratio based on historical returns and historical volatility. So you want to be a portfolio up here. If you pick a portfolio down here, what are you doing? You're taking on the same amount of risk that you're taking on by being in a portfolio up here, but your projected returns is a lot lower. So therefore your risk adjusted returns are low and that's not something you want to do. So what does this mean? The red star is the maximum sharp ratio. So there exists a single portfolio on the efficient frontier that maximizes your risk adjusted returns. In this case, it happens to be at around 100% annually. Sometimes it can be higher up, but it's just based on what we what we put into the into the into the brute force uh, brute force system Monte Carlo approach here. 100,000 simulations. There existed one that maximized it, and that would be the efficient frontier right there. This is the sharp ratio. It's uh, RP is the return, RF is the risk minus the, the risk free rate, okay? And then the standard deviation, uh, sigma P is the standard deviation of the portfolio's excess return. So it's not the return, it's not the standard deviation of the return, it's the standard deviation of the excess return, which is, again is the difference between the return and the risk free rate. So risk. I always talk about it and everyone's like, what is this risk this guy is talking about? Especially in the bull market, he doesn't know what he's talking about, everything's going up. Again, if we start with Bitcoin and Ethereum, there exists a single portfolio that maximizes your risk adjusted returns. And in this situation, in this situation, the sharp ratio was maximized at approximately 75% Bitcoin, 25% Ethereum. I've been running this analysis for a long time and what I can tell you is that I see those numbers fluctuate depending on where we are in the cycle. I've seen the Bitcoin percentage go as low as 60% or, or, or as low as 60% with just a Bitcoin and Ethereum portfolio. I know it says Litecoin, but this one's just Bitcoin and Ethereum. I've seen it go as low as 60%. I've seen it go as high as 75%. Okay, so we know, or 76, 76%, because it was, I, I put it on the next slide, it was 76% Bitcoin, 24% Ethereum. So we know that in this situation, the portfolio that maximizes your risk adjusted returns based on only Bitcoin and Ethereum would be approximately 76% Bitcoin, 24% Ethereum. And we use that to discuss what would be the portfolio that you would wanna have to, to maximize your risk adjusted returns, where you maintain the potential upside if the market goes back up, but you also minimize your downside risk by having majority in Bitcoin. Now, you might wanna look at this on a 3D, or, or say three different uh, portfolios, not just, or 3D, three, three different uh, assets, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. And you might say, well, Ben, what's this Litecoin business, right? You talk about Litecoin, being not the best choice based on returns. And that's right. And that's why I'm using it in this in this example to show you why it's not the best choice, okay? You might say, well, also, Ben, why don't we throw in some of these coins that have been doing crazy this year that just launched a few, a few months ago? Again, we don't have enough data. We do not have enough data on them for us to have any type of useful analysis. Simply, we don't, because they have not experienced a bear market. We don't know what their downside potential is. With Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, they've been around long enough that they both, they've all experienced a bull market. They've all experienced a bear market. We have some idea. We have some idea of what they're capable of. More so with Bitcoin, less so with Ethereum, just because Ethereum hasn't been around nearly as long. Um, but what we can say is that if you had a portfolio of all three of these coins and you didn't want to maximize the sharp ratio, um, 
and, and go for say 76% Bitcoin, 20, 24% Ethereum. Let's say you said to hell with maximizing the sharp ratio. I want to take on all the risk in the world and I want a higher volatility. You know, get this 65% volatility out there, out of here. I don't, I don't get out of bed for that. I want 70% or 75%. Well, you can see that the more volatility you want, the higher expected return you could get but you have more downside risk, okay? So as you move up, you're gonna, you're gonna experience less and less Bitcoin in a portfolio that maximizes uh, the expected return at the expense of more volatility. And as you go down, you can see the, as you go up this curve, meaning your expected return goes higher, your Bitcoin percentage goes down and your Ethereum percentage goes up. Litecoin basically does much of nothing, okay? And the reason I'm showing it is to show you that a lot of coins people tout as they're, they're like the next best thing or they're, they're going to go up and you know you just wait and see but litecoin's been bleeding against bitcoin forever it's been bleeding against ethereum forever and and you're going to get gray hairs waiting for it to waiting for it to make that move where it's going to go back up you know a ton like it did in in a prior bull market so be careful be careful with with, with things that that don't really show they have any business being in your portfolio okay i would say be careful with those um so in this situation in this situation going up to 105 percent expected return uh you know i mean it could be it could be putting you at at around um, this would be all the way up here. It would be putting you in around 0.03% Bitcoin, 99.5% Ethereum. Obviously, this is not a very safe play because if, if the market goes down, then you're going to be wishing you had more Bitcoin. But if the market goes up, we've seen that Ethereum actually outperforms Bitcoin over the duration of a, of, of a bull market. Okay, we've, seen it, we've seen it move up significantly against Bitcoin over the last couple of years. And my guess is that we could go down in the short term, but the entire market cycle, there's still a ways to go. And by short term, I mean the short term could go three to six months potentially. Um, now we look at this and, and we say, well, it makes sense that having a majority of Bitcoin is probably a good thing because when things turn bearish, you're gonna wish you had more Bitcoin and valuing your portfolio in Bitcoin probably makes the most amount of sense rather than valuing it in USD. The only time you should value it in USD, in my opinion, is when you're ready to cash out. When you're ready to cash out, if you want to go pay off your mortgage, yeah, then it matters what the USD valuation is. Um, so there is a time to value it in that type, in that you know, in that scenario. But a lot of times you want to value it in terms of your Bitcoin. And and one way to ensure that your Bitcoin valuation doesn't just drop like a rock is to have a majority of your portfolio in Bitcoin. Obviously, when altcoins start moving, you can start to diversify a little bit more and pick up more altcoins. But when, when things are bearish, um, making sure you're focusing on Bitcoin is not the worst idea in the world. So in this situation, you know, if you're putting $1,000 into the market and you, you didn't really care about the short term because you're, you're in it for the long term, you're in it for multi-year time frame, and you only want to get Bitcoin and Ethereum, then it would be about 76% Bitcoin, 24% Ethereum. This is not financial advice, by the way. This is just based on historical data. This is, this is the sharp ratio maximized based on the historical data of the highest expected returns and, or sorry, not, or just based on the expected returns and historical volatility. 76% Bitcoin, 24% Ethereum. So in that, in that case, you might say, well, what if I want to put $1,000 in, but I want a little bit more risk? then you could you could you could adjust it accordingly let's say you wanted 80 percent volatility um but a higher expected return annually then maybe you would do 35 percent bitcoin 65 percent ethereum but you have to realize that there's no guarantee your portfolio will yield you know that return in the next year we know there are some years that go down it's just that on average annually that's what you would expect to see so i hope that this discussion is useful i hope that we can use these types of things to identify what are portfolios that make sense and what are portfolios that don't make sense. And you might say, well, you just said you did a Monte Carlo approach, brute force. I did to start with, but then to actually solve for the maximum sharp ratio, you can just do a little bit of quadratic programming and identically solve for it. I mean, obviously we can get into problems of con convexity and whatnot, but you can, you don't need to do the, the brute force approach to actually solve for the sharp ratio, the, the one that maximizes it. Otherwise you'd just be running endless simulations until you figure, you know, until your computer just can't handle it anymore. So the, the conclusions that we've come to based on historical returns, again, this is not based on my opinion. This is not based on my opinion. This is just based on modern portfolio theory, maximizing the sharp ratio, based on historical moves, based on historical volatility, 
having a majority of your portfolio in Bitcoin is the way to maximize your risk adjusted returns. If you don't want to do that and you want to go for a higher expected return, you can do that, but you always have to realize that in the short term, you really don't know what's going to happen. And, and, and by having a lot less Bitcoin, if we go down, like if, if Bitcoin, let's say Bitcoin goes to, you know, to valuations much lower than where we currently are, and if you have very little Bitcoin, your Bitcoin valuation is probably going to go down as the other coins in your portfolio likely bleed against Bitcoin. That's the point, and that's what I want people to think about. So if you're new, I've always given the same, the same perspective. If you're new, where should you start? In my opinion, I would start with Bitcoin. Always start with Bitcoin, in my opinion, no matter when you come in, because you never really know what's going to happen. And by starting with Bitcoin, you get exposure, you get the blue chip crypto. After Bitcoin, I would start with Ethereum. After that, you can go into some of your favorite altcoins. But starting with Bitcoin and then going to Ethereum is, in my opinion, is the way to go. It's not financial advice. It's just based on historical data. I've run this analysis for a lot of coins. Bitcoin and Ethereum tend to be at the top of the list when you include coins that actually have been around for a while. If you include coins that only been around for a year or two, it completely throws everything out of, out, of, out of whack because a lot of these coins haven't experienced bear markets and we do not yet know their downside potential. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. Also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Remember to check out the premium list. You can find a link to that sale in the description below as well. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, click the bell icon to turn on your notifications and I will see you next time. Bye.